Pop Squad. Cool Manacho. How's everybody doing? Hey, if you want to order one of these cool stickers, 50,000 subs for Papa Squat, uh, that's me. Uh, you can find the information down in the description of this video. Uh, $4 a piece, Cash App, PayPal, Patreon, if you want to send me a music, a music, a music to listen to. And uh, please like, subscribe, and share. Helps me out. Um, let's get to the music. We're going to listen to something. Uh, these are all leftovers from last night's live stream. Uh, that was a great live stream oh so much good music in there oh I, like crazy good um i don't know if those show up in my regular uh like videos that are that show up in people uh in people for people who uh just happen upon my channel uh, but they are they do show up like on my page and i think if you are subscribed they show up in your subscriptions so uh, but go find last night's video. It had just some fantastic stuff. Uh, let's see. I think I still have. So it was Cyber and Garden. And this isn't everything. Uh, Gun Deity was right at the end. Chief Keef, Lil Chili, Arca, Juno, and Rifa. Hackle with Cemetery. Quadronal. K. Quadronal? I. I don't know what that is. Uh, Young Thug, Akimbo Fours, uh, and there were many more, including uh, somebody who hadn't sent in any music before, Zad Azad. Oh, fantastic song. I loved it. It was near the end. And uh, all this stuff that I'm doing today was left over from yesterday, or is just a track that I want to do because I've been meaning to do some Tame Impala. So we'll get to that eventually. This is a longer track. This is from 1987. And uh, I actually read up a little bit on this last night. Future with the song Acid Tracks. And this is uh, taken off of vinyl. And this is one of the first, if not the first, uh, Acid House. Sorry, it says it's first Acid House song from Future, produced by Marshall Jefferson, released on Tracks Records. Da, 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 da. It has been, uh, Jones had been interested in, in developing a dance music and specifically. Uh, and superficially interested in house music after Spanky had taken him to DJ Ron Hardy per to see DJ Ron Hardy perform in Chicago. And um, they made this track. And uh, it became very important, foundational to the Acid House uh, it track in the United Kingdom. And uh, just ha it's, it's a very important piece of music. I know I did not read enough of that to really have it make sense, but... I am super interested in hearing what this is. It's like 12 minutes long. I think it's the first track. Acid Tracks, Future Jacks, your friend. Da, 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 da. Maybe that's not right. Maybe I need to listen to Future Jacks. Let me see if I can find... Oh, this album is called Future. I see, I see, I see, I see. So maybe I want to listen to Future. No, I want to listen to Acid Tracks. Let me check this out. Yeah, Acid Tracks. Yes, yes, yes. So let's check this out. Uh, it is, in fact, the first track. It's about 12 minutes long. Let's do it. That's what I got. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share, all that other stuff. Let's listen to this. <sighs> Hatred. Hatred, hatred, hatred. I sorry, I forgot that I had left this open on my computer, and of course, of course, it's going to make me do this. So um, let's do this. Over. cool to hear um what i assume are like computer generated sounds right for sure along with actual instruments like that that bell whatever that is um which has to be a real thing it's not a sample it just didn't it wasn't that advanced at the time also it drives me crazy to hear about this being from 1987 and being just down in chicago because i grew up like an hour and a half north of chicago 
and uh, I could have gone to see some of this stuff back in the day had I known it existed. Like I, that was 1987 was my senior year of high school, freshman year of college. <sighs> could have done it. absolutely love it i 100 like if i had heard this in 1987 i would have freaked out i would have loved this this is reminds me so much of like the electronic stuff that i listened to in the 2000s Whoa, this is good <laughs> trancy too like it's so it, it like completely hypnotic and and s definitely fits in kind of the trance feel i'm loving this <laughs> Thank you. 
God, I can't even tell you how much I love this. I this I, I just downloaded it on my phone. Like, there's no way that this doesn't become a song that I just listen to a hundred million times. This, this is so good. I could listen to this anywhere, anytime, in the car, at the gym, when I'm writing. I uh, absolutely, absolutely love it. Doing housework, like, fucking anytime. <laughs> that it's like non-stop transitions like it does like one musical phrase comes in as the other one is going out and a new musical phrase comes in and then the, another one leaves and a new one comes i just love this <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm looking up this uh, album, and I looked this up on the stream last night. The uh, the Pills is is the the band or Pills, and the song is or the album name is Electrocane, and this came out in '99, which I think is crazy. But something on this album, uh, this Electrocane album, I think sounds quite a bit like this whatever that instrument is and i think it might be the one that that kind of inspired this quite a bit is uh the like that we're hearing a lot of i think they may have used that in this album or were super influenced by it and i haven't listened to this album in a few years now and it was absolutely one of my favorite electronic albums uh in the 2000s god i listened to it so much and um and if you have not listened to this go find it because if you like future this this acid tracks I, I think you would like the pills they have some fantastic songs on that album electrocane really check i want to listen to it again because i've been talking about it but it i think it i think it has some definite tracks back to this like it's got to <laughs> This is Start and cut everything back, take it all away. Oh my god, that is so good. That is so incredibly good. And part of me is like, it's too long, and another part of me is like, holy crap, I could listen to that forever. But it's nuts that that's 1987, and I think the rest of the music industry took like another 10, 11, 12 years to figure out like, oh, yeah, no, this electronic music stuff could be awesome. Because I remember like, uh, when was... Fatboy Slim, loved Fatboy Slim. 
uh, musician and DJ. I want to know like when his first albums came out. <laughs> 60 years old, Jesus. Um, he came out with his albums. Why is this so big? Jesus Christ, that's 100%. Um, yes, he was in the House Martins, which I like that band too. House Martins, Fatboy Slim, 1996. Okay, so he started doing probably um, Better Living Through Chemistry. Uh, when was that, though? In 96. Okay. So, yeah, almost 10 years later. And there were lots of bands that were doing electronic music. Moby is one that I can certainly think of. Aphex Twin. Um, but I can't imagine that all of these people weren't influenced by Future and this Acid Tracks. Almost specifically Acid Tracks, right? Really super cool. I Really super cool. Please go check out this Electro Cane album from Pills. I loved it. Still love it. Uh, this was fantastic. This was super cool. Like I said, I already downloaded it. Man, what a good song. What a good track. And it's just, it's just, it's pure electronic music. Like, that, that's, that genre. It, uh, it, that's fantastic. That's so cool. That is so cool to see. I have never heard of this song. I wonder if I've ever heard it. I don't think so. Acid House and House. Oh, there's so much the beginnings of like trance in there. I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Uh, that's that's it. I mean, it was 12 minutes of music, so uh, that's plenty. Pop Squad, check it out. Please like, subscribe, and share. Cash App, PayPal, Patreon over here if you want to have me react to something. And uh, still, I will always be annoyed with my parents that they were not people who like to go and do things in like, you know, a city an hour and a half away. Because I could have known Chicago better. And I, I was 17, 18 years old in 1987. <sighs> Man. To me, Chicago was like so far oh my god it's so far away i've now driven to chicago multiple times from my hometown and it's not that far it's it's like a straight shot down i-90 i think and it's not that far it's not hard to get to it's uh, i'm so annoyed with my parents i'm so annoyed i mean my dad he, he's gone uh, in fact, I think today, it was Father's Day five years ago that he went into the hospital and never came home because uh, he was a very sick man. It was unfortunate. That's a, It's an icky story. It's an icky story. He had dementia. And um, then towards the end, around this time, he also developed cancer. And they weren't going to tell him he had cancer. They didn't tell him. My mom was like, there's no point in telling him he has cancer because he'll forget. And so like, I mean, it would be torture. Every time he would wake up, he would remember that he had cancer and wouldn't know how much time had passed and how much time he would have left. Or he wouldn't know and we would have to tell him the reason why you're in the hospital is because you have cancer. And he would have that shock again of finding out that he's dying of cancer. Awful. Just awful. And it, I mean, it didn't take long. He was gone by the end of... Oh, well, if, I mean, really by the beginning of July, he was gone. So it was weeks he was in the hospital and it was, it was not good. It was not good. Because I remember I was home over July 4th weekend for his memorial service, and he had, he had already passed away. Yeah, but just the insanity of somebody having Alzheimer's and then also getting a cancer diagnosis. And he was 10, 12 years into Alzheimer's, so he was, he was not himself and hadn't been for a long time. And uh, just awful just uh, and my mom having to make those decisions and my sisters were there with her and like I talked to her a lot but 
crazy stuff. It was not, it was not a good time. But yeah, that was five, five years ago, I think. Maybe six years ago now. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but it was rough. It was rough. Anyway, have yourself... <laughs> anyway, nice transition, John. Uh, have yourself a good, good day. And uh, if you're a father, I hope you had a good Father's Day. I had my first official Father's Day as an actual father of a child. I have, like, stepkids and things like that. But that was... um. It was nice, even if I did have to work at a job that I don't want to be doing. But there you go. On a Sunday. Have yourself a good, good day. I'll be back with some more music. Bye-bye.